Hi guys, this is gsnlaw.com and I'm here with a handset called the Elephone Trunk. Elephone is a company from China, established in 2006 and uh, they've been having a bit of a boom over the last year, launching lots of handsets. Okay, so uh, this handset that we're reviewing right here was launched a few months ago and it's priced at 159 euros in a shop that has been certified by Elephone in France. It's a mid-range 5-inch handset and it's the first Elephone model that we're testing. Now let's talk about the design. So the Elephone trunk measures 8.9 mm in thickness. It's uh, thicker than the Xiaomi Mi 4i that measures 7.8 mm in thickness and it weighs 138 grams so it's heavier than the same Xiaomi Mi 4i weighing 130 grams. Uh, it reminds me a bit of the older Nokia models, it has a very nice texture at the back. It's soft touch like the Asus Zenfone 2 Laser and it comes in black, white, pink, cyan or blue. It's very comfy to hold and uh, pretty solid. It has quite a long body so in spite of being a 5 inch handset, it's not very easy to use with a single hand because once again it has a pretty long body. It's actually 2 millimeters longer than the Xiaomi Mi 4i. It has good grip and rounded edges, as you can see here, that help with the gripping. So up front we got the earpiece, sensors and front camera, as well as the home button right here, flanked by two capacitive buttons that I'm pretty sure you cannot see because uh, they're just uh, signaled by very small LEDs. Okay, now at the back, main camera and flash, the logo and speaker right here and uh, you can remove this cover, the black cover. I would have to say that the removing part is done fairly easy. Here we go. And below the cover you can find the two SIM slots here the micro SD here and the removable battery right here. You have to be very careful when you put back the cover so you won't overlap in any way the volume and on off button which has happened to me and makes this part rather vulnerable. Okay and now uh, we proceed further at the top we got the audio jack and the micro USB port while at the bottom we got the microphone nothing on the left side but on the right side we got the volume buttons and power button with good feedback. Overall for a mid-ranger, a 5 inch mid-ranger, it's not a bad looking phone at all. It's very comfy so no objections or drawbacks here. As far as the hardware goes, this here is a 5 inch IPS LCD screen with a resolution of 1280 over 720 pixels and the phone has a quad core processor, it's actually a familiar face. It's the quad core Qualcomm Snapdragon 410, clocked at 1.2 GHz. It's the 64 bit processor with Cortex A53 cores and a 28 nanometer production process. We also get the Adreno 306 GPU, 2 GB of RAM, and 16 GB of storage. Then we got the micro SD card slot that supports up to 32 gigabytes extra. We got a 12, uh, excuse me, a 2 megapixel shooter at the front, so selfie camera. While at the back, there's an 8 megapixel camera. On the connectivity front, we're dealing with Bluetooth 4.0, FM radio. LTE is also available with uh, speeds of up to 150 mega per second in download. There's Wi-Fi 802.11, BGN, GPS, GLONASS and micro USB 2.0. The sensors available here include the proximity sensor, light sensor, gravity sensor and that's about it. Now on the battery front, what you saw before is a 2100 mAh unit which should provide 360 to 400 minutes of talk time and the standby time should be at tops 200 hours. In our test, let's see what came out. So our test involves HD video playback in a loop with Wi-Fi on and brightness at 200 lux and using that method we achieved 5 hours and 35 minutes which is a bit of a letdown, it's not impressive, at least we beat the LG G3 that offers 5 hours and 6 minutes, the Huawei P8 Lite with 5 hours and 25 minutes and the LG G Flex 2 with 4 hours and 7 minutes. Still we scored below a ton of phones like the HTC One and 9 that offered us uh, 6 hours and 9 minutes, the M-Star S700 5 hours and 55 minutes and the Xperia E4 7 hours and 18 minutes. Sadly we also tried PC Mart and it did not run on this device, we tried it 3 times and no luck. 
the charge of the battery requires 2 hours and 22 minutes. It's about at a mid level, if you ask me. It charges faster than the Huawei P8 Lite, that will require uh, 2 hours and 41 minutes and faster than the M-Star S700 with its 2 hours and 45 minutes charging as well as faster than the Coolpad Modena with its 2 hours and 55 minutes. Still, of course, there are many other models that charge faster than this handset. For example, we got the OnePlus 2, 2 hours and 30 minutes, LG G3, 2 hours, OnePlus 1, 1 hour and 15 minutes. And if you go into the settings area, we got special battery options, as you can see here we got a graph and we got battery saver that can be turned on or off and when it's turned on it helps improve battery life by reducing performance, limiting vibration, location services, background data, email, syncing and other things like that. So overall the battery would be a bit underwhelming here because we couldn't test PC mark and because the video playback time is only 5 hours and 35 minutes and the charging isn't impressive either. So on the acoustic side, there's a speaker at the back here, there aren't any headphones bundled and to play music we're going to have to rely on the play music application. And this means we get to have a look at an equalizer that surprisingly enough is not the stock one, but rather Snapdragon Audio Plus. So we got uh, these presets here for various genres, hip hop, metal, electronic, it's also custom with 5 channels, you can turn it off if you want, we got bass boost and surround sound only for the headphones, plus these extra options like small room, medium room, large room, medium hall or plate. So that's the equalizer in a nutshell. Okay, let's proceed further and actually listen to a tune. We got other options here like streaming uh, and other things like that, adjusting the experience. As I said before, time to check out some music. Let's turn out the volume. Okay, now some conclusions. The acoustics are pretty loud, the bass is so-so, the sound is clean and the voices are heard okay in the songs with voice. All notes are also heard okay, but there's a big problem here. There's a big muffling on a flat surface, so you can check this out. There's a huge discrepancy between the front and the back of the handset and we have proof for that. Once again, no headphones, but we do have FM radio, in case you were wondering. And discrepancy, here we go. At the front, um, excuse me, this is the back. At the back, we achieved 83.9 decibels, which puts us 0.1 decibels above the iPhone 6 Plus, so good result. While the other result at the front, a huge difference, only 67.9 decibels, which is the worst result ever measured here at gsndown.com, so a bit of a mixed bag a pretty good result and then a pretty bad result. I would have to say that the high result beats the LG G Flex 2 with its 82.9 decibels, we beat the Huawei P8 Lite with 82.9 as well, and the iPhone 6s with 81.7 decibels. In spite of that, we scored below the Ligu Lead 1, 84.2 decibels, below the Asus Zenfone 2 Laser, 85 decibels, and the Xperia E4 G, 86.5 decibels. I would have to say that the acoustics are okay, minus the moment when you place the handset on a flat surface. Now as far as the screen goes, this is probably the biggest surprise about this handset. 5 inch IPS LCD, LCD with a HD resolution and OGS technology, we don't have a specialized video player so I'm going to have to resort to the gallery here. Let's check out this video and turn down the volume. Some of the options available here are audio effects, stereo, streaming settings and the speaker on. Audio effects are only activated with the headphones on and now let's get to the actual viewing experience. So we got a crisp image, 
are realistic colors, also pretty vivid. It's a bright screen with ok contrast, it behaves well in full sunlight. It's a bit of a pleasant surprise. Wide viewing angles, as you can see, and a vivid image. Pixels are of the RGB stripe kind. And if you don't believe me, here it is the proof. Under the microscope, the screen of the device, RGB stripe, and the biggest surprise was the lux meter test. We measured 499 lux units, which is very impressive. This beats the OnePlus 2, which is 465 lux, HTC One M8, 463 lux, and Galaxy S5, 480 lux. It scores a bit below the iPhone 6, not very far from it, 570 lux, below the Evolio Onyx, 564 lux, and the iPhone 6s, 618 lux. Overall, a bright screen on this mid-range handset, and we got some extra screen options here, like adaptive brightness that optimizes the brightness level for available light, wallpaper, sleep, daydream, font size, cast screen and blur effect, in case you need that. So, biggest surprise about the phone, display, and now it's time to analyze the cameras. At the back we have an 8 megapixel shooter with LED flash with a Samsung sensor. It's able to interpolate shots from 8 megapixels to 13 megapixels, while up front there is a 2 megapixel shooter for selfies. The camera UI goes like this, and the camera app is activated pretty fast in my book. You will be able to see throughout this analysis that the camera keeps refocusing over and over again. So let's check out the user interface, it's kind of cartoonish, kind of like a caricature, and it has tons of options. First of all, the modes. We got sunset, landscape, snow, candlelight, night, portrait, beach, sports, AR, action, ASD, theater, fireworks, flowers, auto, party, uh, night portrait, steady photo and backlight. If you select portrait, you'll also get a skin tone enhancement mode right here. Okay, and then we got some effects like negative, emboss, sepia, aqua, mono, posterize, neon, none, solarize or sketch, flash options, torch on, auto and off, and finally the options, beware, there are a ton of them. Zero shutter delay can be set to on or off, location, countdown, size, you can take photos in 13 megapixels, although this is an 8 megapixel sensor, we got 8 megapixel, 5 megapixel or 2 megapixel available here, beep during countdown, histogram, picture quality, normal, fine or super fine, then we got focus, that's a bit of a mixed bag, sometimes you can access it, sometimes not, for unknown reason, anyway, continuous shot, saturation, that has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, 11 levels, auto HDR, Contrast, also with 11 levels, face detection, can be set on or off, touch autofocus and touch auto exposure can be set up here, selectable zone uh, auto, and uh, I'm guessing this is autofocus, can be set to auto, spot metering, and center weight and frame average. Okay, we continue the analysis, then we got uh, sharpness with its extra options and levels here, wavelet denoise mode, exposure with 5 options, select auto exposure, spot metering, center weight or frame average, white balance, anti-banding, red eye reduction and ISO, going up to a surprising 3200, and finally preview size and HDR also available in the same area. Then we got the video options, prepare for more. We got audio encoder that can be AAC or AMRNB, video duration 30 minutes, 10 minutes or 30 seconds, time lapse, uh, image stabilization, white balance, video quality, full HD, HD or lower location, video encoder which is H264, H263 or MPEG4 and those are all the options you get to play with, quite a few especially for a mid-ranger. Other than that, it's time to analyze the experience, as I said before, the focus is a mixed bag. I played with a ton of options and settings here and I couldn't get the device to allow me to do some touch focusing. It either keeps continuously auto-focusing or no focus at all, so focusing is kind of random. While the zoom goes up to 6x, it's pretty fluid and fast. And the picture taking is a bit on the slow side got that zero shutter option available now, which kind of speeds it up, but in normal mode, as you can see, it takes quite a while. Now let's see what happened, how the pictures look like. 
This is one of the shots I've just taken, looks pretty clear, I have to say, good texture and good lighting, in spite of the fact I didn't use a flashy. Okay, of course we have a gallery taken outside, in full sunlight, and it's December sunlight, so no much of a sunlight. I'm going to start off with some indoor shots, looking pretty good, ok quality, ok color and slightly overexposed, and then we get outside. Clear shots, ok colors, some blur, this shot has this pole here blurry, this is also blurry, but you can view that blur on a PC rather on this small screen. Some decent landscape shots, even though it was very cloudy. Not huge detail loss, usually on some mid-range phones if you zoom into landscape shots you start to see that the leaves of the trees are blurry, not in this case, which is good news, so if I zoom in here I don't see much blur, so landscape shots are fine. I also took some selfies that are a bit overexposed, but the quality is I would say decent. And HDR is also in the picture, so a regular shot. HDR shot a bit too artificial for my taste, it's like an abstract painting. But overall, the exposure, white balance, and uh, let's say the lighting were okay, only the focus was a bit of a letdown. This is also part of that series of blurry shots, you can see here, you cannot see the text clearly, because it's a blurred shot. Close-ups are okay, most of the times. This is one of the good close-ups, also good one, good ones here, and this is an overexposed. I tried to get a close-up of this knot to manage it, while this one is certainly a better close-up. Off to another series of captures, good texture for these leaves, nice statue here, and some pretty nice close-ups of flowers, a bit of a blur if you zoom in, but once again the word texture pops up, and I have to say that this handset handles it pretty well, very nice leaves here. It's hard to get the proper focus for close-ups, that's what I noticed, so it's hard to get close-ups, but check out the gloss on these shots and the good colors, so when the light is good and you're patient enough to focus, you should be getting some nice results. Here is an example of a blurred shot, I tried the close-up and couldn't manage it. Overall I'd say that this camera is not better than my own iPhone 5, for example, it has some focus problems, however landscape shots are fine, the selfies are decent, we got good colors, ok exposure and details, I would put it in the same league with the Ligu Lead 1 and the M-Star S700 that we tested a few months ago. Obviously, we also have uh, video capture, which I'm going to probably have to play from the gallery as well, because there's no video player here, so here we go. Let's find those video captures, there's three of them, we filmed in Full HD, MP4, we had a disappointing uh, 14 frames per second, but the bitrate was good, it's 19 mega per second. So video 1. A lot of refocusing. The image feels choppy. Poor stabilization. And it really feels like it's moving in frames, so a bit of a letdown in my book. And video number 2. The same problems, plus acoustics with echo. Another bummer. And very poor stabilization even for digital stabilization standards. Ok, and the last video, even more echo. Slightly more ok, but a bit too dark for 1pm. It's not HD looking at all, in spite of being full HD, so overall the filming here was very poor compared to the photo taking. If I were to grade this, I would probably give the video capture a 5 and the picture capture an 8 or 9, but as I said before, we don't grade handsets anymore. If you plan on doing some editing, you can select a shot, like this one here, press this button, and we have a bunch of frames to play with, a bunch of filters first, then frames, then options like crop, rotate, draw, things like that. Auto color, vignette exposure, and these ones if you have a human face to tweak. Now we're done with the camera, as I said before, decent photo taking, underwhelming video capture. And if you want to talk about performance, you have to talk about temperature. After playing the game Riptide GP2 for 15 minutes, we achieved 41 degrees Celsius, which means there's a tendency to get a bit hotter, not overheat, but get a bit hotter. Now on the browser side, this is the stock browser on the device, and let me just go and access gsnbound.com 
as you can see it's not a very fast browser it's actually quite slow the scroll is pretty fluid and the virtual keyboard is the stock lollipop one well spaced and comfy on the connectivity side of things this is a dual sim handset with lte support the letdown is that we don't have wi-fi a or wi-fi ac there's no nfc but the signal is okay the call volume is okay and we got good sound quality when calling speed dial is also here now obviously it's time to talk about the benchmarks and it was easy to find handsets to compare this one with why because the elephant trunk has the same processor and ram as the samsung galaxy a5 and uh, it's also very close in specs to the Huawei Honor 4X, although that one has an octa-core processor and this one only a quad-core will have to make do. So in quadrant, this model scores an impressive 13,765 points, beating the Huawei Honor 4X with its 5,764 points and also beating the Galaxy A5's 11,867 points. On Tutu, brought us another good score, 23,781, we got beaten by the Huawei phone with its 27,000 points and we beat the Galaxy A5 with its 21,000 points. Nanomark registered here 54.3 frames per second, the Honor 4X has 59 frames per second and the Galaxy A5 54 frames per second. Velamo is in the mix as well, in the HTML5 test offering us 1961 beating the Honor 4X with its 1841 points and uh, meanwhile the Galaxy A5 has 2041. 3D Mark had a not so impressive result, 4382, while the Honor 4X had 5385 and the Galaxy A5 4330. 4, Geekbench 3 is here, in the single core test 499, in the multi core test 1505 while the Huawei phone 556 over 1723 and the Samsung Galaxy A5 476 over 1431. Ok, let's continue with GFX. In the T-Rex off-screen 1080p test we have 5.3 frames per second, the Huawei phone has 9.1 frames per second and the Galaxy A5 has the same 5.3 frames per second. We also did a speed test. So 22 mega per second in download and 22 in upload via Wi-Fi while the Huawei phone has 21 and 21 and the Galaxy A5 24 and 21. Browser tests are in order. So in browser mark 12.99 while the Huawei Honor 4X 11.87 and the Galaxy A5 12.82. Sun Spider 16.39 here and um, uh, the lower the better, so this is quite a high result, so not so good. We did beat the Huawei Honor 4X with its 1739, while the Galaxy A5 had 1357 and beat us both. Finally, Base Mark X, 4125, huge distance from the Huawei Honor 4X, 10556. So overall, this model is able to win 2 out of 11 benchmarks. It beats the Galaxy A5 in 7 out of 9 tests. In one of them they're equals and the other one we don't have the result for the Galaxy A5 so at least it beats the Samsung Galaxy A5 in 7 out of 9 tests. In spite of all these results that are actually quite good, there's no lag here, I didn't exp uh, experience any problems with fluidity, so excellent quality when it comes to regular usage, no lag, no problems whatsoever and games like Riptide GP2 run just fine, taking advantage of this very bright screen. Let's turn down the volume a bit. Responsive controls, good looking graphics, nice looking water and a nifty speed sensation. So no problems when it comes to gaming here, good lighting, good shadows, effects and things like that. It can stand on its own versus the Samsung Galaxy A5 and the previously mentioned Huawei phone. An interesting aspect, if you go back and look at the unboxing of this phone, you saw a totally customized Android Lollipop, well no longer, we received two big updates and it reverted us to a stock Android 5.1. 
1.1, which is kind of strange. The original ROM was heavily customized, divided into segments, didn't have an app drawer, but here we are with a stock lollipop. If I keep the screen pressed, I can access wallpapers, widgets, settings and apps, and widgets are the stock lollipop ones. The drop down area shows us the notifications, brightness slider and the quick settings. And uh, speaking of settings, we got the usual options here for connectivity. For buttons, you can associate various tasks to these capacity buttons here. Related to various features, we got the status bar option, display, sound, notification, storage, battery app, system profiles, accounts, backup and reset. So that's all in the settings area. Now let's see the pre-installed apps list since only it's only a screen and a half long, there's no bloater here, luckily. We got browser, calculator, calendar, camera, clock, contacts, there's downloads, email, file manager, FM radio, gallery, Gmail, Google, Google settings, maps, messaging, phone, play games, play music and play store. And then there's service, settings, sound recorder, voice dialer and voice search. So once again, note bloatware and a fluid user interface. It's time for the verdict, time for the end of the review. This is the telephone trunk that's uh, available in Europe for a pretty affordable price, well below 200 euros, gravitating around 160 or so euros or even less. So on the pro side, it's a comfy phone. It has a um, pretty okay maximum volume. It surpasses the iPhone 6 Plus. It has a very bright screen, actually one of the brightest mid-range handset screens we've seen lately. It has a ton, and I mean a ton of camera options. Some would say too many, it can take a few decent pictures for Facebook and for this price, it doesn't suffer from lag, it has no bloatware and it keeps pretty much the stock lollipop experience and offers ok performance for the price. On the con side, since those were the pros, we got the video capture that's rather poor, the battery could certainly be better than 5 hours and a half of video playback and we got that speaker muffling going on, the temperature gets a bit high after a quarter of an hour of gaming and the change of UI from the unboxing till now feels strange. So overall, this is a mid-range 5-inch handset that stands out by being comfy, well-built, having a bright screen, ok acoustics and a so-so camera. The price probably remains the biggest advantage here and the nice performance pretty much on par with the Samsung Galaxy A5 which is no small feat. So this is it from gsn.com, this is the review of the Elephone trunk, as I said before, a mid-range handset that's pretty good in the same league as the Samsung Galaxy A5, although not with the same camera. This is it from us, bye bye.